Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Jamil Fasin, a postdoc researcher at Kansas State University. So Jamil, I think with this episode, you'll actually be the most frequented guest on the show, but in case someone hasn't heard any of your other episodes, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Absolutely, yeah. Thank you, Clayton, for having me here in the, the Black Belt. Uh, yeah, it's the third third time that, I, that I'm here in the show. I'm Jamil Fassin, I'm at DVM, got my degrees in Brazil, uh, master's and PhD as well there. Uh, worked for four years in a swine production company with 400,000 sows. Then uh, after my PhD, I came to Kansas to, to do a postdoc. So now I'm in a postdoc role here with the Applied Swine Nutrition team at K-State. Awesome. So let's talk about some of the studies that you've done there at K-State with the differing levels of soybean meal based on market projections. Why do you think this is important right now and what effects did you guys see? Yeah, uh, so Clay, uh, here we are, uh, this is part of one biggest project and here I want to acknowledge the, the United Soybean Board that is that are one of our partners in this uh, project. We are trying to learn how much soybean meal we can give to a pig and try to understand uh, based on the market price uh, uh, if there's any advantage of increased soybean meal levels. And uh, just a background on, on the, this research, uh, there is a, an idea that uh, with the Renewable Fuels Initiative, we probably we can have a lot of soybean oil being produce, produced and, and, and required by, by the, the, uh, the customers. And then uh, uh, it's projected, but it's not right, but it's projected that, uh, well, soybean meal as one of the, the co-products of the soybean uh, will increase. So that will be, that will have more soybean meal available in the market than we can expect. Uh, a, a possibility of having soybean meal price going down. So that's why we wanted to understand more why we can, why, uh, how much we can offer of soybean meal, add to the pig diet of soybean meal. Just uh, uh, a brief, a brief comment here. Uh, in the beginning of the year, we were right above uh, five hundred dollars uh, per ton, and now we are below four hundred. So uh, it's decreasing. So we are seeing a drop in the uh, soybean meal price. So I think the ideally, we don't want to, to give any recommendation here of how much soybean meal you need to add, but we want to provide fresh data and then you can uh, 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 do in your production system. Uh, for example, uh, if, I, if I capture a better performance, uh, uh, does this price of soybean meal, uh, uh, it's enough for me to add more, it pays back. So it's, it's basically this is the concept of this research. And uh, we did two experiments, uh, uh, starting with around uh, 40 kilos, going until around uh, 70 kilos, and we have uh, different soybean meal levels. Uh, two experiments, one, we have five uh, different soybean meal levels and the other four different levels. We started around uh, 19% and go until 34%. So that was the goal. Uh, uh, a normal uh, uh, pig diet, for this age of pigs, for this weight of pigs, will run will be around twenty uh, percent of soybean meal, eighteen to twenty percent of soybean meal. Uh, but in in one of these studies, we added twenty percent DDGs, and the other we just have corn and soy diets. So by wrapping up the results, we saw one uh, uh, improvement in average daily gain and also uh, uh, feed efficiency when increase uh, the amount of soybean meal in the diet from nineteen. To 33 percent, a linear a linear improvement uh, 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 when you when we add more soybean meal to the diet in the trial without DDGs. It's important to mention that. But really, the biggest improvement were from the first to the second level. So when we increase from 19 to 23 percent of soybean meal, and here we can we, we understand that there might be something uh, related to crude protein because uh, the first level has. Uh, around 16% of crude protein, and the next level has around 17.5% uh, crude protein. So, uh, and then after that, it's kind of flat. Even though we found a linear response, uh, 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 we can we can you can really tell that the biggest improvement were uh, when we increased from around 19 to 22. However, when when now we talk about the uh, uh, increasing soybean meal, but having 20% DDGs in the diets, we haven't seen any difference. And our hypothesis for, for this, for this different result compared to the first experiment when we don't have DDGs, uh, we understand that 
when we add DDGs to the diets, we set, we increase the base level of crude protein in those diets. So the, the lowest level of soybean meal in this experiment has already 20% of crude protein. So we had all other uh, treatments well above uh, uh, 20% crude protein. So we, we, we kind of think that this might be one of the effects why we found an improvement in performance without DDGs uh, and why we haven't seen any difference in performance with DDGs. So that's basically the, the conclusion of the study. Uh, so uh, even though we have that biggest improvement between the first and second level, uh, we can say, since we got a, a linear response, that increasing from 19 to around 33% of soybean meal, we can improve performance of the pigs uh, without changing feed intake. That's an important point. But when we add DDGs to the, and, 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 and here 20% DDGs, we had no impact in performance. And what we want to do with all these uh, results is uh, uh, understand that this is a, a, a fresh data on increasing swabbing meal, but the final diet cost will dictate the formulation strategy that is most economical to use. So that's the the, the, the main conclusion. It's kind of obvious, right? But uh, of course, if we are having some economic advantage, adding more swabbing meal, and also this economic advantage coming from uh, also improved performance, it's it's a good thing. And as we, we are seeing some drop uh, uh, in the in the soybean meal price, I think this is this is important to the nutritionists to have in mind. Gotcha. So you talked a little bit about why the the addition of the dried distillers grains may not have yielded as um, good of growth performance. Um, do you also think that it could have been partly due to differing levels of like the branch chain amino acids from the high you know leucine and dried distillers grains? And if so, do you think maybe? adding or trying to balance those with um, some synthetics could have alleviated that and improved performance, just like in the first study? Yeah, it's, it's a good point, Clay. Uh, and also, I wanted to add something that is important in all these soybean meal studies. We consider the soybean meal having uh, the same amount of energy as the corn. So here we are talking about isocaloric diets. And also, we basically re re uh, increase soybean meal uh, uh, by removing synthetics. So we didn't adjust any branched chain amino acids based on their relationship. But but we added the Enrique Samin's model uh, to try to understand uh, a predicted average daily gain with these different levels of immune. There is a, a slightly improvement in performance, but like it's really small. So uh, uh, if, if, if we talk about branched chains, I don't expect that that will be one of the cases why we haven't seen any performance. I think I will go more with the hypothesis of the crude protein, but it's a valid point because for the diets, when uh, for the for the diets in the experiment with having DDGs, uh, we have a lot higher uh, amounts of uh, percentage of leucine, for example. So even the lowest value has a, a high leucine. And here we have all amino acids, not not only the branched chain, but also all other essential amino acids uh, at or above the requirements. So we don't have any uh, 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 the amino acid deficiency here, even in the low uh, soybean meal diets. Gotcha. L-Biotics, the pioneer postbiotic for digestive health in pigs. Brought to you by Adair Biome. With over a century of experience in postbiotics for digestive health, L-Biotics contains heat-treated lactobacillus cell bodies and their metabolites. Stable by nature, L-Biotics can be easily stored and incorporated in compound feed. And then my other question for you was, um, based on the market projections with the research that you did, and like you said earlier, I mean, it depends on the final diet cost. You're not just going to necessarily pick the diet with the best gain. It's best gain for the money that you're putting in. But um, based on those market projections, what range of soybean meal increases do you think we could expect to see throughout the industry? Yeah, uh, you know that right now, uh, uh, a typical growing pig diet Will range around 18 to 20 percent, like in the very the very first diet in the grow, grower phase, and then then it drops to 11 to 15. It depends also if you if we are talking about having or not having DDGs in the diets. If we have DDGs, of course, uh, 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 we're gonna have a low soybean meal. But yeah, I would say that with this drop in the prices right now, I think that we are kind of seeing some scenario to increase a little bit uh, if we capture some performance back. But uh, uh, my, my recommendation would be, depending on your system, you need to calculate the income over feed cost uh, to see if it pays off. And uh, uh, so it, this is kind of a hard question to say, but I would say that 
uh, uh, if we saw, for example, here without the DDs, a slight improvement in performance and, and uh, the market projections showing that the price might uh, uh, go down, uh, we can see increasing from uh, a little bit more than 18, 20 percent uh, in the very first diet for the grower phase. Gotcha. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show and I believe that's all we have time. But yeah, with your third episode now, I uh, appreciate all the time you've done and all the help you've provided with these research trials. My pleasure, Clay. My pleasure. Thank you. Yep. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And we are constantly on the lookout for the latest updates in swine nutrition. And if you have a swine nutrition related research trial that you would be able to share on our podcast, please send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com. And we would love to talk about your research. See you later.